PCN is brought to you in part by the following underwriters. I'm Kim Mio. I'm here with Julie Thompson this week. And welcome to PAC TV Community News, local stories from Duxbury, Kingston, Pembroke, and Plymouth. This week, we take you to a rowing open house from Duxbury Maritime Academy, and we stop into career night for the Kingston Girl Scouts. PCN takes you to a youth art showcase at Silver Lake Regional High School, and we meet the youth of the year from the Boys and Girls Club of Plymouth. We stop into Pilgrim Academy, an alternate school that's part of Pilgrim Area Collaborative, and we head to Pembroke COA to hear about area social services. Home Matters is back with more real estate information from Remax Spectrum's Mike Gamaris. It's going to be a great show, and we begin at a unique school located in the Industrial Park in Plymouth. Pilgrim Area Collaborative is an educational institute in conjunction with the public school system. They support 10 school districts in the region, both middle and high school ages. If a student in the public school has social emotional challenges or is struggling with learning due to being on the autism spectrum, a school can do a specialized placement to pack. It's under their special education budget. Pilgrim Academy in Plymouth is one of their largest facilities and PCN visited to learn more about this program. What we do is build special education programs for students who cannot be serviced within district. Since we began providing these extended services in 2002, we have grown from servicing two students and families to over 90. The other piece that for us we've seen is really a growing increase in intensity of the needs of some of these students, that it's not just behavior. We're seeing behavior, communication, social. Anyone that needs a non-traditional education, who's had some obstacles, who really need the amount of therapeutic support, the amount of love to get through their typical educational day, are going to thrive in our school. What's different about Pilgrim Area Collaborative is that we try to connect the school to the home, to the community. So we believe it's very important that our students have carryover into the home, and so we do some parent training. Within our extended services program, we provide supports and training to parents who are struggling often to meet the behavioral and um, often social and communication needs of their children. So they have frequently tried the typical things that they've done with their um, other children and they have found them to be unsuccessful in supporting students who present with more significant communication and behavioral challenges. So the supports that we offer provide parent training. We put specialized staff into the homes to support children and their families within their home and community settings. In addition, we take students out into the community to give them access and opportunity to be functional in settings outside of the school. And also we believe we do a service to the community in teaching the community to interact students with disabilities. You know, initially they're feeling very frustrated and hopeless in their ability to support their child. And when they see something as simple as the child can now sit at the table for an entire mealtime with their brothers and sisters or attend a community event like a birthday party or you know, engaging in repetitive behaviors that they're able to play appropriately with peers. That for them often gives them a real sense of empowerment and encouragement. And they become able to carry those things off across environments and in different situations. Uh, we love the students here. The staff love the students. We have a positive culture. Uh, class sizes are smaller, only about eight students with two adults in each classroom. So they're able to get a tre tremendous amount of support here and also have the privacy to work through their issues, whether it be with their counselor or a teacher or a teacher assistant. That's very difficult to do in a large public school setting. 
So really focusing on providing those independent skills so that as students are transitioning into young adulthood and then eventually adulthood that they have the skills, the parents feel secure in the, the ability for these students to be successful, again, at whatever level they can be, whether it's in a supported community living environment or on their own. They come in somewhat timid, somewhat overwhelmed, anxious, not sure that this is the change that they want. Then I start to see them grow and blossom here, hold the door for each other, smile with their classmates, feel good about their learning. Uh, the first time they might receive honor roll, we cook them a breakfast. So I tend to see students go from very timid, very anxious, very negative experiences with a very negative narrative about their school history to so much more positivity, to getting along with others, to smiling, to feeling good about the successes that they achieve. What a wonderful story. The two things that I really came uh, away with, with, in 15 years they've gone from 2 yeah. to 90 yeah. students that they, yeah. that they serve. And the ratio of 8 students to yeah. 2 uh, it's amazing. Uh, it's, teachers. A, it's amazing what they do there and what they accomplish there. I was there for quite a while and I, I couldn't help the interviews being so long and I had to narrow it down. But um, the, the other thing that was the increase in st amount of students but also the intensity of the problems right. that they're encountering and, and what they can do at the school to help those kids individually right. to feel confident and the family. They So they really interact with the family yeah. right. to make it all work together and then help them become uh, a functioning adult in society. You yeah. know, I mean, it's, yeah. it's it's just, it's so important. Terrific Such a great program. program. That's wonderful. Have you ever wondered what it takes to be on the crew for the head of the child's race? Okay, you might not want to row at that extreme level, but maybe you'd like to know how it feels to row on a nice, placid bay. Whatever style of rowing interests you, the instructors at the Duxbury Bay Maritime School can steer you in the right direction. We stopped by the school when they hosted an open house for anyone interested in their adult rowing program, which started just a couple of weeks ago and will run right through the summer. Despite being a not so nice day, plenty of people were still curious enough about the adult rowing program at the Duxbury Bay Maritime School to step inside the boat, known as a shell, and learn some of the basics of rowing. Even this guy gave it a shot. The whole point of it was to get folks that maybe don't know that they have access to the bay out on the bay, uh, taking a few strokes and uh, experiencing the rowing stroke on the indoor rowing machines as well. Rowing machines have seen a surge in popularity in recent years as a means of cardiovascular exercise. And for a class like this, it can really be helpful. If your experience on the water is limited, or if you have none at all, it's better to find out here what the correct form is than to be stuck out in the ocean. Of course, the instructors would never just put students out in the water and hope for the best. It's a gradual process. We'll work people uh, on the machines first, the uh, ERG machines, and then we'll work it so that we are putting a boat attached to the dock and having them take a couple strokes so they're not leaving land quite yet. And then we tie the boat off, let them take a little uh, few strokes to float away from the dock a bit, and then we pull them back in. And, Gradually, we work away from land so that they are uh, working within their comfort zone. We don't want to push anybody's limits. We want, just want them to have a nice time. One thing's for sure, you will be in the most capable of hands if you do decide to go straight to the water without using the rowing machines. So really, either way, if you're getting involved in the sport, you, you can't have a better first experience than getting on the water. But we use the indoor rowing machines absolutely to teach the foundation first. And the foundation is important because the most common misconception is that rowing relies heavily on upper body strength. Rowing is really a leg sport and it's all about pushing with your legs. You actually push the boat past the oar in the water instead of most people think you're actually pulling the oar through the water. It's more you're pushing the boat by the oar is exactly what's happening. And your legs are your strongest muscle, so that's why you use them the most. One thing that stood out for me during my time in the shell, as well as watching others, was how much patience the instructors exhibited while being extremely thorough with their explanation. I love the sport, and I've been doing it for over 30 years, and so I try to instill my love for it to them and um, have patience with them, take them at their speed, how because people all learn different different rates and speeds and we just take our time to so it's successful for them. I don't care how old you are or how unathletic you are, you should come and try to row because it could change your life. This next course runs for seven weeks and when that one finishes up it rolls right into the eight week long summer course. 
Reporting from Duxbury Bay Maritime School, Brian Sullivan, PAC-TV Community News. Representative Josh Cutler met up with area social service providers at Pembroke's Council on Aging to connect the public with services they may need. Having everyone in one place helped connect the needs with the providers, and PCN stopped in to bring you the story. Sure, so today we had a social services forum here at the Pembroke Council on Aging uh, called We're All in This Together. The idea is to bring together service providers and connect folks with help that's out there, whether it's for fuel assistance, legal services, uh, housing and rental assistance, or maybe transitional assistance, getting uh, access to um, food and fuel assistance. There's a lot of different uh, forms of help out there, and we want to make sure folks in need know how to and can connect with uh, those who provide the help. So having these events, I think, is important because it connects folks you know, in the community, and we had a whole uh, range of folks from Pembroke, Hanson, Duxbury, all over the South Shore. Um, being able to meet face-to-face -face with service providers and the folks that provide help, you know, oftentimes there's services and programs out there that people just aren't aware of, and, and you know, connecting the dots is the key thing. And folks, you know, somebody, some folks here may not uh, necessarily need all the particular services, but now they know what's out there, and, and, and when they're talking to their friends or neighbors and, and colleagues, and now they can uh, share the, spread the word, so, so to speak, and let people know, uh, you know about the many services uh, that are out there, whether it's, you know, again, providing fuel assistance uh, in winter months, trying to qualify for you know, vouchers for someone who's uh, trying to find an affordable rental, someone who's having trouble with their mortgage and trying to get uh, foreclosure relief prevention, uh, someone who might have lost their job trying to find a new job. It's a lot of different um, you know, avenues to, to get help and we want to make sure people are aware. So we try to do this kind of uh, we're all in this together event um, you know, on a regular basis. We've done it here at the Pembroke Council on Aging before and over in Hanson and elsewhere. And it's just a good way you know, to remind folks about the help that's out there and, and how they can find out and so forth. And we appreciate uh, you know, PAC-TV broadcasting this and helping to spread the word. And you know, hopefully the, the word will get out there and people will be aware of everything that's available. I have all these uh, brochures, I don't know if you can see on camera, you know, of, that were left here. Just a small slice of what's available from the different uh, social service agencies that came. And people can visit my website at uh, joshcutler.com to kind of see as well. Um, so there's really a lot of help out there, and uh, you're not alone. People uh, can help, and uh, please don't be shy about reaching out for help. I think that's the message from today. Art students from Silver Lake Regional High School had their work on full display as part of the Spring Art Showcase. For many seniors, this was their last hurrah before they head off to college. We spoke with the school's art instructor on the opening day of the exhibit. What we have here is the, um, the Spring Art Show, the showcase, and it represents artwork from um, most of the students we have in, in the program at Silver Lake High School. Um, the seniors and juniors um, have to do a panel of their own work, and um, each kid um, takes uh, work from what they've done during the year or things they've done at home and does a display for um, their final grade. The Kids that do the panels are juniors and seniors, so they've been in the program for either four years or three years, and they're um, they're very they have a very good eye. They're very, very talented kids. They have a good collection of work. Um, they when they um, put their panel together, they really come up with a vision, um, and it's not anything that I tell them. It's something that they just come up with on their own. Uh, some of the kids who were here today have been talking about what they're going to do next year. So they, they really put a lot of thought into it. Um, sometimes it's a piece of work that they have that inspires them to create a whole panel around that piece. Um, sometimes it's just the way that the work comes together. Um, you know, so every kid, every kid has a different inspiration. The art program at Silver Lake has been really well supported. Um, we have um, a lot of support from the community, from the parents, the school committee, um, and the, the administration here. Um, so when the kids come through a, a, a program for four years, um, they really are well, um, well prepared for college. And even if the kids aren't going to art school, um, they've just been enriched for four years and they just have that art in their lives. Um, and you know, studies show that people who have been in the arts do better in life. And people who are hiring, um, young adults now are looking for someone creative, someone who can work well with other people. Um, imaginative, so all those skills they get in an art class. Well, we want people to, first of all, appreciate the talent of the students. Um, you know, the kids just have so much to offer 
the community and just the, the um, skill that they have and the vision that they have. And um, we want people to see the, the quality of the program, um, how hard the kids work, how hard the teachers work. And um, you know, it's just something that, gets, that happens in the art class, but people don't always see it. So it's nice for, for us to celebrate it out in the, in the school so other people can see it too. Amazing talent in our high schools. Every time we do one of these, I'm just, <laughs> uh, I'm just in awe. What I loved about that, that was a little different, was that the students got their mm. own panels and they could do, they could show the different mm. forms of art they yeah, do. Because yeah. a lot of students are better, they're good in a lot of things. Well, sometimes you go to an art show and you, you see so many different pieces, and you're kind of like, okay, you know. They, and, but now with that one panel, you can kind of see that person's personality yeah. and their and their skills. It's just, yeah, I like that. Just incredible. They're just wonderful. We love doing art pieces because these kids are so talented. They're great. Each year, the Plymouth Boys and Girls Club hosts their Youth of the Year Award. Three finalists fulfill their public speaking requirement at the banquet dinner, and one walks away with the award and scholarship as well. We met with the organizers to find out more about what goes into being nominated for this prestigious award. Tonight is our annual Youth of the Year Awards Dinner where we honor our three finalists in our Youth of the Year program. These are kids that have worked really hard, um, have been longtime members of the club, uh, they've been through our community service program, and what Youth of, the, Youth of the Year is, is a scholarship program um, with scholarships from the Stephen Magnin Memorial Fund. And with this, they're able to get scholarships to go towards the next step, which is um, college and post-secondary education. All of our candidates um, have gone through this program uh, in terms of they've had to do complete community service um, at the club, at school, out in the community. Um, they have to do a uh, writing prompts, they have to be judged, they go through interviews, so they're learning a lot about public speaking, and then the three finalists that are chosen get to come up on stage and fulfill their public speaking requirement, so they have to prepare a speech. Our applicants all get involved in this program as early as December. It's something that they're thinking about from when they're six and seven years old for many of them. Um, they write multiple essays for it, they fill out forms, there's recommendation letters that they have to get from club staff and teachers. Um, they practice interviewing skills, they practice writing skills, they practice public speaking skills. This really is a many month long endeavor. These are for kids ages 14 to 18. Um, and then we have the, a Torch Club program for kids ages 11 to 13 that eventually graduate on to our Keystone Club, which is part of the Youth of the Year program. I definitely encourage kids uh, from their younger years to start looking at the older kids who are involved in the program as role models and encourage them to take the same steps that they're taking, get involved in community service, um, make sure that you're working hard in school and you're committed to the club, you're acting as a role model for other members. These are all the qualities that we look for for Youth of the Year finalists and winners. They're talking about what the club means to them, the experiences they've had at the club, um, what Youth of the Year to them is all about, and they just, a lot of the times, they just speak from the heart. PCN recently visited a trip to what you can be, which was a Girl Scout career event held at the Kingston Intermediate School. Dozens of area female professionals set up tables to showcase their careers and talents. Girl Scouts of all ages could visit each table and ask questions to the women about why they chose their career, what they studied in school, and what a typical workday might look like for them. Careers that were represented included veterinarian, marine specialist, bat surveyor, district attorney, armed forces, video production, dance instructor, baker, and more. This is our fifth annual time doing this event, and it started about six years ago at dinner. One night, my daughter, we were talking about careers, and she, I said, well, what are you going to be when you grow up? And she says, well, I'm going to be a professional softball player, and then in the off season, I'm going to be a marine biologist. And I looked at her, and I said, that's awesome. Then when mom was growing up, we could be a secretary, a mom, a nurse, a social worker, and a teacher. And lo and behold, I'm a social worker and my sister is a teacher. And I thought, I started thinking about all the peers that I have around me. And I said, there are some amazing women in this town. And the girls need to meet them if this is the way they're thinking about their careers. Well, I love being a Girl Scout because 
Uh, you get to do fun things like this, and you get to go on field trips, and you just help, like helping people. Well, I saw a dance studio, uh, someone who works with uh, cells in your body, and I saw uh, bakeries and uh, mar uh, marine, marine life. I want to be a pediatrician. Um, because I like helping people and I like, I would love, I um, always wanted to be a pediatrician. So I started calling a couple of friends and said, would you come to my troop, talk to my girls? And it started like that VO5 commercial. And then they told two friends and then they told two friends. So by the end, I had 65 women the first year presenting at this event. We had 85 girls attend. The following year, we opened it up to the entire state. We had girls from the Cape, from Hanover, from Franklin, Duxbury, Sudbury. They drove all here. We had about 110 girls and 55 presenters last year. And when we do the exit polling with the girls and the presenters, I think the presenters have a better time at the event than the girls do. Because they say it's very rare that people stop to ask us to talk about our careers and get to share it. So it's a great event for everybody. We're so happy to welcome back Mike Gamaris, who's the owner broker of Remax Spectrum Realty, with his section of our news called Home Matters. Welcome back, Mike. Thanks for having me. This is your third installment it here. It is. Time's and flying. We want to kind of recap the state of the market, and then we're going to talk about how you get your home prepared to sell it. Great. So, how are we right now with inventory? We're still having a, a, an inventory issue. You know, things are uh, things are definitely hot, so people know that homes are selling, but they're selling too quick. Uh, so, homes that come on that are priced <laughs> properly. They're, they're selling too quick. They're selling too quick. Uh, there's a lot of buyers that are waiting. Yeah. There's a lot of demand. And so uh, if they're priced properly, people are in them quickly and uh, offers are going. Yep, there's price price increases uh, happening. It's it's pretty incredible right wow. now. Wow. Wow. Although I'm seeing more more signs out, it seems. I've yeah, seen more definitely. for sale signs. Yeah, the, the time that they're going under agreement is shortened. So you still see the signs linger, but uh, yeah. they're, not ready, they're not available anymore. Yeah. Now, are the prices staying about the same, or are they increasing? Still increasing. Uh, the inventory issue will continue to drive that to uh, to increase. We're seeing about a 5% year over year um, consistently hold true, and I think we'll see that for a few more years, too, if uh, this inventory issue doesn't stabilize. And that's in both the condo and the house It market? is, yeah, okay. single family and condo, for okay. sure. Um, we're seeing multifamilies uh, sell even quicker. Uh, those aren't coming on because investors are seeing good profit there. So. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, there's not a lot of those around here, though, right? There is. Uh, Plymouth Plymouth has a good amount, uh, and then towns, as you move a little for, further north, don't, don't have, have as many. many. Right, okay. And is it a buyer's market, or is it a seller's market? Definitely still? a seller's market it's still. still a seller's market. Yeah, okay. yeah. They're, they're, uh, they're definitely seeing, because this price increase is happening, and because the demand is there, yep. uh, they're, they're seeing their homes go quickly. And what that's causing is a little bit of anxiety, because they're afraid to put their home on the market, because they know it'll sell quick, right. and they haven't found the home they're looking for, because there's a low inventory. Right. It's a big circle. So oh. we're trying to solve that today. Okay, so how do you calm people down with that? Well, there's there's definitely ways. If they have a professional realtor working for them, they can protect them to make sure they're not left homeless. Right. Uh, their home <laughs> sale can be contingent on finding the right home. Okay. And that's the key. You know, they don't want you don't want them worrying that we put our house on the market, it sells quickly, and now where do we go? Yeah, We're going right. to be left without a home. That, right. that won't happen. That's not going to happen. Okay. So let's talk about how you get your home ready to sell it. Um, and there's, there's a lot of things that go into this. And you yeah. said, you, you named some of them. One is to freshen up the exterior, which yeah. kind of seems like a no-brainer. No, it is. It is a no-brainer. But a lot of times people think that, you know, freshening up your home and getting it ready for sale is going to cost a lot of money. Right. And it's really not that way. Uh, there's some simple things you can do to, to really change the curb appeal, which everyone is looking for great curb appeal when they pull up to your house. Right. Um, so it's simple things with making sure the lawn's mowed. Yeah. Uh, Weeds <laughs> gone. Yeah, trimming the shrubs, <laughs> putting new mulch down. Yeah. You know, just... Uh, Simple things like maybe painting some trim on the outside, yeah. um, cleaning the clutter, you know, all the yard stuff, the toys yeah. are out there because of the winter and right. whatnot. Clean that stuff up. Uh, and that really changes the perception of your home from, sure. from the street. From the street view. The other thing I notice is roofs. Some people have like awful coloration on the roofs and sure. some people have mold growing on the roofs. I would think that would be a really important thing to do also. It is. And it's very simple too. It's a, it's a pressure it's washer. It's having someone right. to come out if you don't have one and they can really wash down the house and make it nice and clean again. And uh, those are, they're very simple things. Okay. Um, declutter. 
Mm. That's you're talking about the interior. Yeah, inside. Okay. You definitely need to declutter inside. And you know, w w our lives are, are fast paced and busy. We have kids, yeah. or you don't have kids. You're, yeah. you're always on the move. Yeah. And you know, the way we see our home inside is our normal. Right. Um, but that's not how everyone else sees it. So right. sometimes it takes uh, a minute just to step back and, and look at: Do I have any extra furniture in the room? Is it really kind of condensed and congested? Um, are the toys strewn about? Can we organize a little bit better? Right. Um, so a lot of times people think you need to move that stuff out of the house, but that's not necessarily true. If you have a basement, um, you can store stuff right. neatly in the basement. Right. People know that you're going to be right. moving and you're you're preparing. Right. Um, so it's it's good just to kind of take a, a walk through and make sure you've removed things that you haven't used in a while. And people that like have their counters completely covered with stuff. Yeah. Just put it in the cabinets, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I know it's a little bit more inconvenient to have to pull the toaster oven out when right. you need to use but. it. But it definitely looks makes the space look a lot cleaner, neater, and open. Right. Now, what is staging? Because that's a that's a relatively to me, it's a new new thing yeah. that now realtors are are very very involved with their sellers on staging their home. What does Absolutely. it mean? Absolutely. Well, you know the, the the trends that happen in the marketplace uh, are changing every year, mm -hmm. and realtors um, have staging professionals they work with to make sure they understand you know what are people looking for when they're searching for their home. We like to see uh, clear traffic lanes from room to room. Okay. You um, like to see open space and family rooms to make sure there's a gathering uh, location for people. Right, yeah. Right, right. So they're just they're not necessarily bringing in new furniture or new artwork or anything like that. Mm -hmm. It's repurposing what you have in the home mm -hmm. and putting it in the right spot so that that home has the best light, has the best uh, flow, mm -hmm. and, and it's very easy to do. It generally takes just a couple of hours, and even if they hire somebody, you're talking about a few hundred dollars, so it's really not expensive. Right. Now, I know my, my neighbor recently put his house on the market, and the realtor said, take down wallpaper. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's something that if you have different rooms that all have different color schemes, yeah. it might be an idea to just neutralize. Yeah, you know, paint and paper are, are part of the least expensive things you can do, right. uh, and it takes a little bit of, of man hours to do it. Yes, but uh, if you have dated. Uh, wallpaper, yeah. <laughs> that, that's when you need to, to lose it. If you have bright colors, sometimes it's worth a, a gallon of paint to tone yeah. it down and bring it to a neutral color. Right. Um, those are probably more of the extreme uh, level staging items because it, we find more times than not, it's really just how the room looks as far as the flow and, yep. and what's there. Yep. Um, and people just accumulate too much stuff today. Right. And people, uh, a prospective buyer wants to come in and be able to just envision what they would put in that room. Exactly. So you don't want to define the room by where everything is. Yeah. You, you want them to be able to. You don't want them walking through and, and seeing the organ that was used 20 years ago from when your kids were growing <laughs> up and things like that. It's just kind of clear things out and make it ni nice and easy. Right. Uh, make repairs? Yeah, make repairs. When you've um, done your staging, you might realize at that point, well, the couch was against the wall and now there's dents and yeah. whatnot. Um, simple paint touch ups, mm -hmm. making sure all the locks work in, in the doors. Yeah. Uh, make sure the, the cabinets, there's nothing wrong with the hinges, the doorknobs, the, the cabinet knobs, things like that. Because people do open. They, they do. open everything. They and check if, everything. And if every closet doesn't open, yeah, it. Yeah, you might have some really nice built ins, but you haven't used them in a while. And as soon as you pull the door open, it falls <laughs> off the hinge. Right. Right. It's a little bit of a problem. Right, so right. it's good to just kind of go yep. through and make sure everything's in good working order. Okay. All right. Um, and then you're ready. You're ready. Okay. And, and you know, this process takes a couple of weeks, but if you hire a, a professional to help you sell your home, mm -hmm. they can do some nice marketing during that period uh, under coming soon and get people prepared and ready for your home coming on the market. And then when you're ready to go, you're ready to show. Right. So it's really important that people build in that week to two weeks before they're actually going to put it on the market to make sure they've, they've crossed all their T's and dotted all their I's. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, if you're out there looking for the next home and you haven't prepared your home or gotten it on the market, you're going to miss out on that perfect home that comes on the market. For so you, you really need right. to get ready now, get your house on the market, yep. be protected, yep. and then when the right property comes along, you'll be ready to go with it. Right. And like you said, you're not um, having to keep the market your house on the market very long, so the days of having to keep your house perfectly clean for six months, yeah. what it used to be, that would be get very... Tiring, it frankly. is. It's hard for a lot of people. I mean, things are busy. And yeah. If you have kids, obviously there's clutter. Right. Um, you can set rules for showings. You can make sure you have 24 hours notice. Yep. It, it, you just you do want to keep it as clean as you can, yep. but you don't have to go crazy. Right. Um, but you know, I think definitely the, the key is uh, setting your kids up, letting them know what yep. the expectations sure. are, and each day just cleaning it up yep. and, That's and a being good ready point. to go. Yeah. Because we think of it from an adult point of view, but you have children that live in this house. Absolutely, yeah. you're yeah. not going to stop your life, right? You know, so right. you just need to make sure you they don't people don't stress about that yes. because buyers coming in know that you're living in there too. That's right. That's right. Great info again. This is Love wonderful. This Thank is you great. so much, Mike. We'll Thank have you. you back again to talk about more home matters. Perfect. Thanks okay. so much for Thank having you. me. Thank you. Thank you. And we hope you enjoyed the show tonight. To rewatch, you can go to Pack TV's Prime Channel found at our website, or go to our YouTube page. We're also on Facebook and Twitter. We're back next week with more local stories as well as new life episode. See you then.